so uh, she mentioned, thank you for the introduction. I'll straight away get to the topic. Uh, as you know, UAVs or unmanned aerial vehicles are everywhere. There is an increasing demand in civilian, military, as well as commercial applications. These uh, vehicles are inexpensive, um, uh, cap capable of autonomous and sensor-driven applications. Um, and with this, uh, modern UAVs pose a serious security threat. As you know, uh, there have been incidences where uh, these commercial UAVs and consumer UAVs have uh, prevented flights from taking off and have caused major airport shutdowns. There have been also incidences of uh, drones uh, attacking oil facilities. Um, and one thing common to all these drones is that they rely heavily on GPS. So GPS, or Global Positioning System, uh, provides positioning, navigation, and timing information. Uh, they rely on wireless signals from orbiting satellites. And a major factor about these signals is that uh, they lack any form of authentication, which makes it extremely vulnerable to spoofing attacks. Uh, in a spoofing attack, uh, an attacker transmits uh, fabricated signals uh, and forces the receiver to calculate a wrong location. In the past, researchers have demonstrated attacks on uh, GPS receivers. Prior work has also shown the ability to disrupt or alter the motion of uh, unmanned vehicles. There are limited studies on the feasibility, but no previous work has examined and field tested a controlled takeover of UAVs in a real environment outside of a simulator. And with this, there are some research questions that haven't been answered yet. One is, can an entity, adversarial or active defense, precisely control a UAV's movement by spoofing appropriate GPS signals? And if so, uh, what are the requirements and fundamental limitations of such spoofing uh, strategies? So with this in mind, we perform an uh, exhaustive experimental analysis on the behavior of consumer UAVs under a GPS spoofing attack. Uh, in this process, we enumerate several challenges and, uh, in accomplishing such uh, takeovers. Uh, we also show that it's, uh, to some extent it's possible to uh, control the speed and direction of UAVs uh, through GPS spoofing. And finally, we uh, implement a real-time signal generator uh, that can make arbitrary changes to the spoof trajectory, uh, which allows us to introduce a human-in-the-loop GPS spoofer uh, through which we can manually execute patterns like 180 degree turns. So before we move on to uh, the actual experimental evaluation, let's take a look at the flight controller architecture. So the flight controller has multiple tightly coupled components, uh, like variety of sensors, a sensor fusion algorithm, PID controllers, and actuators. The UAV uses all these components in tight coordination uh, to maintain the required orientation, position, and velocity. There are predominantly two flight modes, where one, a manual mode, where GPS is not actively used for navigation. However, there's another mode, which is the autonomous mode, where uh, the UAV heavily relies on GPS. Now, GPS plays a crucial role in this tightly coupled architecture, and spoofing attacks on GPS affect the entire processing chain. And given the tightly coupling of uh, various subsystems, including inside a flight controller, we need specialized environment for thorough analysis of these attacks. Uh, so we essentially need an environment where we can wirelessly transmit spoofing signals. And also, uh, we need capability to monitor the drone's movement with high precision. So for this, we make use of an anechoic chamber, uh, which is large enough to fly drones. And it uh, prevents us from running into legal issues of transmitting GPS signals wirelessly. Next. This uh, anechoic chamber is also equipped with OptiTrack motion capture uh, cameras, uh, which can track drones with high precision. We also have GPS transmission equipment, which consists of an, uh, uh, of an omnidirectional antenna, uh, software-defined radios, and power amplifiers. And finally, uh, we test all our attacks using uh, consumer UAVs from leading manufacturers like Autel and DJI. So we start off with some preliminary experiments, uh, and I'll present some key insights. You can always refer to the paper for more details. So first, we uh, start off by spoofing a static location, uh, where we set the drone to hover, and we spoof the exact same location. And as a result, because of in, uh, inertial drift, uh, the, the drift in inertial sensors and uh, the biases, 
the drone starts moving randomly. Next, we introduce a motion uh, or a dynamic motion to the spoofed location. And as you can see, the UAV motion is uh, shifted by 180, 180 degrees. That is, if I start spoofing in direction of B, the, motion, uh, the UAV starts moving in direction C. So here, uh, the spoof, we learn that the spoof GPS velocity uh, induces acceleration in the UAV as the PID controller uh, responds by uh, compensating for the difference in the target position, which is the uh, original location where it is, and the actual position. Next, uh, we also learn that over time, these corrections get more aggressive, and the UAV will continue accelerating in the initially spoof direction. This means that uh, uh, in such spoofing, the attacker has no control over the speed or the direction. So the UAV will just keep on accelerating and will eventually stop when either it's, uh, it runs out of battery or it just crashes because of loss of thrust. So from here, we conclude that for complete takeover, the attacker should be able to control the UAV speed, uh, the direction, and finally, it should also be able to land the UAV. So let's take a look at uh, our strategy to control the velocity. So we know that the UAV reacts to GPS spoofing by accelerating in the opposite direction. And the lack of control over velocity is because the flight controller thinks that the correction is not working. So over time, the corrections become more aggressive. So to control the acceleration, we can trick the flight controller into believing that uh, the correction is working. So if the uh, actual location is coming closer to target location, the corrections will mellow down. And this can be achieved through a return to launch maneuver. So here, uh, as you can see, that we start spoofing and uh, the drone reacts by accelerating. So here we define this reaction time, uh, which is the time it takes to uh, accelerate and achieve target velocity. So this reaction time can be observed by uh, strategic and controlled uh, spoofing in small increments. Or it can also be calculated and estimated uh, using drones' physical characteristics and capabilities, uh, like its weight, the thrust, uh, and the motor specifications. So as you can see, the drone keeps accelerating. And when we uh, reverse the uh, direction of the dynamic spoof motion, you can see that the drone starts deaccelerating. That is because when the spoof motion is reversed, the difference between the uh, target and actual uh, position starts decreasing. However, when we uh, reverse it again, you can see that the deacceleration is slowed down. And hence, we conclude that periodic reversal of the spoofed motion's uh, direction can be used for velocity control. So to further evaluate the velocity control strategy, uh, we performed 48 experimental flights. And we set the speed limit of 0 0.5 meters per second, and the objective of maintaining average acceleration of 0 meters per second square. Uh, the average acceleration needs to be maintained close to zero, because if the drone's ac acceleration is uh, about zero, then the velocity is constant. So with this, uh, we had fair success rate, about 81% flight, uh, where we maintain the average velocity uh, below the speed limit. And there are multiple factors that affect this reaction time, like sensor drifts, biases, uh, various manufacturing defects, and et cetera. They affect this time-sensitive strategy. So similarly, direction control is also challenging, as simply changing the direction of spoof motion is not sufficient, because the drone already has inertia. It's in motion because of dynamic spoofing. And the flight controller is already performing some correction. So our strategy is to null the corrections by deacceleration. So as I explained earlier, we perform this deacceleration routine and reduce the uh, UAV's velocity to zero meters per second. Once this is achieved, we can introduce a change in the direction of spoof motion and uh, execute uh, this direction control. So as a proof of concept, we have UAV performing sharp 90 degree turns, for example, like here where the drone turns north. So at, uh, at times, this reaction time strategy can fail and is not as accurate. So for this, we introduce a human-in-the-loop GPS spoofer 
which enables a feedback based on UAV's retroactions to GPS spoofing. So here, the attacker observes the UAV's motion and using a human interface device, manipulates the trajectory. So a system like this provides a video game-like control uh, to observe the UAV's motion and then react to it. So let's take a look at the video demonstration of HITL in action. So it's important to note that all the actions performed by the UAV beyond this point are, are its own reactions to GPS spoofing and the attacker has no control over it. <clears throat> and the attacker controls uh, the spoofed signal using arrow keys. So we turn off the vision sensors uh, and the drone instruct the drone to fly right by spoofing accordingly. As you can see, slightly the velocity increases. And eventually we force the drone to execute this 180 degree turn by uh, again, a strategic spoofing in a particular direction. And as you can see, the drone uh, turns and starts moving in the opposite way. And finally, when the drone uh, is close to the walls, we enable manual control and land the UAV. So uh, I'll again like to stress on the fact that all the actions that the drone just performed were its own reactions to GPS spoofing and the attacker is not, or the operator is not controlling the UAV in any way. So finally, once the attacker establishes direction and speed control, uh, what's remaining is landing the UAV. So for this, we uh, leverage existing fail safes. Um, a fail safe is triggered when uh, the flight controller detects any errors that jeopardizes UAV's uh, safety. Um, and for this, two typical fail safes are no-fly zones and EKF errors. So EKF or extended Kalman filter errors occur when there is some discrepancy between uh, inertial sensor measurements and uh, GPS measurements. So to conclude, the final takeaways are that all the UAVs that we tested uh, still remain vulnerable to spoofing attacks. However, precise takeover of UAVs through GPS spoofing is not trivial because once the UAV uh, experiences GPS spoofing, uh, it becomes a very highly unstable system. So we are essentially controlling the chaos. And then the HIS, uh, HITL system that we uh, designed is capable of manually controlling the UAV, uh, but it requires a lot of training, good hand-eye hand coordination, uh, the strategies demonstrated apart from HITL are based on pre-observations of the uh, UAVs and are subject to external factors. And finally, uh, we conclude that precise and fine-grained control requires a closed-loop feedback mechanism where the spoofer reacts to the UAV's reactions to GPS spoofing. So, thank you. <laughs>